Nice. Do you know what's crazy, man? Like in all seriousness, before I do the second intro here, Mississippi is one of my favorite places to go to. Like, and I'm not even kidding. Like if you ask people who know me best, the two places I tell them that I love to go to are Mississippi and Alabama, which is, which is crazy because everybody's like, there's nothing to do. Like, what are you talking about? You go to these other, I don't know what it is. It's the people. Like the people are just cool. Ooh, people. They don't take themselves too serious. Like they don't, like one time I did a thing in, I can't remember if it was Mississippi or Alabama, but when I was done, I did this keynote at this event. And then afterwards I'm riding in the back of a pickup truck with the guy who's the president we got a beer in our hand and we're going to something. And I'm just like, this is, th these are my people. Like these are, you know. You can't do that in California. You can't do that in New York. Oh my God. <laughs> Kid, uh, don't even get me started. Um, all right. So for everybody, everybody chiming in here, guys, uh, we are live. Um, uh, as you're coming in here, do us a favor, hit like, leave a comment below. Let us know where you're coming in from. Let us know if you have a question. Hit that share button. That's going to help because this is all free info. So we want to get it out to as many people as we possibly can. So hit that share button. Uh, I am, I'm really psyched today. Um, you know, uh, I'm going to, I almost said Quintavious again, but uh, I'm here with Quinta uh, Quintavious Burdett, uh, who I am affectionately going to call Q the rest of the time here. And, you know, I saw you, uh, you were on with a good friend of mine, I don't know, it was a few weeks ago on Good Morning Remax uh, yeah. with Nick Bailey. And, uh, you know, you were kind of telling your story and, and, you know, your first year in real estate, I'm going to have you kind of get into this, but first year in real estate, you did 106 transactions. And, you know, what's interesting about that is that, you know, I've got people who follow me that have been doing real estate for 40 years and, and haven't done 106 transactions their whole career, uh, right. let alone in one year, right? So we're going to get into that a little bit. We're going to get into what you've learned. We're going to get into how it's happened. We're going to get into what that means for your personal life. We're going to, you know, get into all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so do me a favor and just kind of give me a little bit of background. So before we go into the real estate side, tell me about your upbringing. Like, like somebody, here's what I know. Some people are just more naturally driven. There's no doubt about it. Like some people come out the womb just you know there is no doubt that environment matters um but i mean i was an adult as a child you know like i was running businesses as an eight year like i mean there's just some things that are ingrained in you right tell me a little bit about uh your childhood did you grow up in mississippi you grow up otherwise did you grow up mother and father did you what did they instill in you like just tell me a little bit about your upbringing yeah so i'm from senatoga mississippi um, that's about 30 minutes from Memphis, Tennessee, which is the largest city close to me. Um, I grew up with both of my parents. Um, they wasn't married. My dad um, has uh, 17 children. My mom only has me and my brother. So I grew up. I'm sorry, did you just say 17 children? Man, 17. It, it's, it's a long story, brother. That, hey, this podcast go over, overboard if we talk about that all day. Holy crap. If you know of 17, it's probably more like 23. Like, holy crap, man. Okay. Yeah, man. So it was crazy. You know, everything you got, you have to fight for it. Uh, growing up, you know, I've always been a different kid on the block. Whereas, you know, some kids, they were getting Xboxes and PlayStation 4s and all this good stuff for Christmas growing up. What I wanted was a weight bench. I wanted a parachute. I wanted uh, ankle weights to go on my ankle when I jog around the neighborhood. I was always different. I was the kid that was up there at the school when it was raining, snowing, hot, cold. Um, doing sprints up and down the, you know, the stadium. And I was just always different. You know, I went to college. I never drank, never smoked uh, to the day. Uh, so you're yeah. saying to this day, you've never drank or smoked? Never, never drank, never And smoked. this isn't just because your mother might be watching this. Like you're this legitimately saying. No, not at all. You know, it's simply just who I am. You know, I make my own decisions. I'm going to go down the path that I want to go on. And when I set my go to do something that's what i plan on doing and it's simple you know i can remember fifth grade um you know my mom um one of her friends they used to get they worked at fritos and they used to get a whole bunch of chips and stuff we used to have chips beef jerky everyone used to come to our house to eat snacks but here's the thing i used to take those beef jerky packs that you can buy in the store for eight bucks i used to take them to school and sell them for five dollars a bag for the kids you know so i used to come home $50, $60, and I'm like, dang, what, where'd you get that money? I, I sold the beef jerky, the ones that we don't like. Like, it was, there was a certain flavor that no one in the house would eat. I used to take those eight or nine of them a day, and it was so crazy. The kids, even after I ran out every day, they're like, man, 
he, come, let me know tomorrow when, before you get off the bus if you got some big jerk or not. So how, how old? How old were you at that point, by the way? I, I, mean, yeah, I, was, I, was, I was ten years old, eleven years old. Take a big yeah, that, That's interesting. My my thirteen year old yesterday was was scrounging around in the um, in our basement, and he was pulling up Matchbox cars. And he's like, Dad, Dad, this thing can go for twenty dollars. And he set up an eBay account, and he's just going through. This can sell for this. This can. Some people are just wired differently. Just wired differently, you know. And then I went to Ole Miss, and which you know, I. I I was gonna say, man, you're representing today. You're, you're representing. The only hat I trade is this baby here, man. You know, <laughs> uh, with the old Miss, uh, played football, ran track, and but also. How, how did you? How did you back up a second? So how did you? Uh, when you were in high school, then you were a high school star. Like uh, you got uh, recruited by Ole Miss. Were you a walk on? You had a scholarship. Uh, uh, like what? Full ride, full, full ride scholarship. Um, to play football and, and run track, so. so you so you took the mixture of look if you're going to a D1 school like Ole Miss, like yep. you're a gifted athlete, right? Yep. But then it sounds like you mixed that with the idea of like I am gonna work my tail off all that like yeah. every single day. Uh, what was it? Uh, Kobe Bryant used to talk about. It's one of my favorite sayings. He said uh, he practiced like he was the 12th man on the bench. Correct. So he showed up every day and everyone knew he was this wonder kid. Like he was the most talented, whatever. Yep. But they'd watch him and he was playing like the guy who was the 12th man on the bench. Like his spot was up for grabs. Yep. Right? It's yep. like that kind of mentality. Always. And, and even with me in school, like I said, I majored in accounting. I got a master's in accounting. A lot of folks don't even understand that. Like the demand that it, it was that was put on me throughout college was something – I don't think a lot can handle. So you, you don't drink, you don't smoke, and you're and you're in an accounting class. Yes. I mean, holy crap, man! I mean, right. were, you, were you were you leaving early to go to bingo on Tuesday nights? Like, what, <laughs> was there a cribbage? Was there was there a big cribbage club that uh, was was getting together? Like, <laughs> a whole bunch of frat boys. And let me tell you, if you ever hung around college kids, the best folks to hang around is frat boys. Man, they have all the connections. They have, they're gonna drink, they're gonna have fun. But in class, you know, they made class so fun. And, but me being the only athlete in the class, they kind of like look at me different, like, dang, he's an athlete and doing what we're doing on a day to day basis. Because I graduated with honors. You know? Meaning score. Right. Yeah. Where did, that, where did that, by the way? So, so did you know your father growing up or no? Yes. Yes. I live, okay. my dad lived. 10 minutes from my mom, you know, we, we go back and forth. Were you involved? Like, were you like, did you see yeah. it often? Like what, I'm trying to figure out like what was driving you? Like what was, then, something got entered in your head, a chip entered in your head or a chip entered on your was, shoulder that said, I'm going to be better than blank. I am going to be different than blank. Like that's how it happens. I wanted to make it out, man. Uh, I watched so many talented individuals come through my high school uh, that just kind of threw their opportunity away. They didn't make it. Um, it's three folks in my entire history of the school has went to the SEC and played. And Jeremy Garrett was one of them, which now he's coaching in the NFL. But simply, I saw that he did. And I was like, well, you know what? Just like my real estate, I saw Jeremy. I was like, if Jeremy can do it from here in San Antonio, I can do it. So I started early, man. I was 10, 11 years old. Like I said, I was asking for weight benches and parachutes so I can go work out. Uh, I didn't go out. I didn't stay out late. I didn't hang around. Um, but when I got to college, it was some of the, some of the same things. You know, I still didn't drink, still didn't smoke. Uh, and it was simply because I felt like if I put that poison in my body, I wouldn't be able to get up the next day and do both football and track because now I'm kind of deteriorating my own body. Same thing with real estate. I feel like if I don't get up and I don't make the calls and do the effort, I'm not going to get the results that I've been getting. So it's kind of pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. You, you simply, at a young age, though, I mean, what I'm noticing here is that you, you, were, you were a professional pattern recognizer, right? Like, right. like, like you were good at recognizing, you know, what other people were doing and where they yes. were ending up. And you were right. looking at that and going, okay, from a pattern recognition standpoint, that's awesome. That's a good, you know, good dude, good whatever. But I have aspirations above that. And so I can't follow, I can't follow that, that, that linear uh, path that they're on right now. I've got to do something different. Would, like, would you agree with that? That 100%, 100%. You know, like I said, growing up, my role model was Reggie Bush. Of course, he's way out in USC, and you know I'm everything Reggie Bush. I understood Reggie Bush went to college to play football. So in order for me to be like Reggie Bush, I have to go to college and play football. And then or you could have dated Kim Kardashian. 
Right, right. And, and man, that would be a whole other story there now. <laughs> but, um, you know, so just looking at him saying, okay, if Reggie can do it, I can do it. If Jeremy can do it, I can do it. Um, I just got to put the time and the work and go, you know, and I'm huge on being seen. I, I like, you know, I'm loud always in real estate and, and my younger kid. When I used to go to those camps in football, if I do something great, I let the kid know, hey, yeah, I'm here. And the coaches noticed it and they're like, hey, who is this kid? You know, he's likable. He's not cocky, but when he do something great, he's going to let you know. He's going to compliment others. Um, he's going to help others. He's going to tell them what he knows. And they started to sit down and kind of really talk to me and got to know me. And they were like, hey, I like him. So, so it's about being, it's about being visible. You know, we, we say that in our program all the time. We say visibility trumps ability. Yes. It's like visible, visible, visible will always win. So, okay, so you get through college. Uh, now, I've talked to you a little bit, so I know you went to the camp for the Giants, right? Yep. And tell me about that. You go to the camp for the Giants. Uh, you don't initially make it, but kind of tell, tell us about that story a little bit. Yeah, so uh, I get a call, and uh, it's from the Giants. Luckily enough, uh, one of the players is Eli Manning, who it's I grant Right, I ran routes for him numerous times prior to it. He used to come back to Ole Miss, and when he's working out there, he needs most to throw to. So uh, the first couple of times, you, you know, we worked out together, he liked me. So when he comes back, he's shooting a tech tail back in town. You know, I run, I'm throwing at 11. So I go up there and run routes. But I get to New York, and everything's going, you know, fine, first two or three days. And, you know, football for me, that's when I realized it, it's not about talent. It's all about business. It's about who have we paid and who do we owe the responsibility to? So, you know, when I realized that, I was like, okay. In other words, we've got contracts with these players. If we let them yeah. go, we're going to have to pay this amount to let them go. We're going to have to cover this guaranteed amount or whatever it is. Correct, correct. And a lot of kids don't understand that, you know, it's, it's, it's no longer football. It's a business. It's like Coke. You know, if you mess up in Coke, you're gone. Uh, and that's the same thing with NFL football. But I realized that I didn't want that up and down roller coaster going on in my life because I still have friends who are still trying to make it to the NFL, trying to make it, trying to make it. And they're putting their life on pause um, to do so, you know. So I just didn't want to be that person. I wanted to start something different. And I had a master's in accounting, like I said. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to go back and I'm going to use my degree. Um, so I called KPNG and told him I was going to accept the job. I started in October. So you, uh, took a, you took a job in accounting? Yes. Okay. All right. And then you're there for what, a week? I was there for four months. And what? Uh, you know, um, for me, it, it was great. I was first one there most of the time, the last person to leave. And I'm thinking it's all about work hard, work hard, move up. Right. And it wasn't. It was simply, um, you know, you're going to move up at this pace regardless if you work this hard or not. And I, I didn't like it, but what really struck me was when they started going over the numbers. I'm a numbers guy. Um, I can break down numbers. Man, crazy. Crazy, crazy skill with breaking down numbers. So they showed me uh, the billing report, which is what they were billing clients, and I started breaking them down hourly. So I went back to my desk that day and kind of Googled what professions can I make when I'm working. Man, real estate popped up. I saw but wait, before it. before you even do that though, you got a call from the Giants. Right. When you're at when you're at the place, like like tell everybody about that. Like you're there. My first, my first day on the job. Um, that's when Sterling Shepard got hurt. Odell got hurt. They wanted oh, no, Beckham to and Sterling Shepard, wide receivers for the Giants, both get hurt. They, they got hurt, and they wanted to bring me in for uh, another workout. And I told him, I said, hey, how long do you think? I, if he said, hey, if you make it there, you'll probably be here three to four weeks, depending on the injuries. I said, no, nah, I'm out. So I'm you done. had to make a decision between, okay, I'm going to go play in the NFL with the Giants. Right. Chances are it's temporary, and I'm going to lose this job that I'm in. Correct. Now you're in this job, you're breaking down numbers, and you're, like, looking at it, and you're going – wait a second now, like I'm billing out at this, I'm only making this. And it's right. a classic entrepreneurial, like let me bet on myself. You go right. watch a video on how to, how to make a hundred grand in your first year as real estate. And at that moment, like tell everybody, you were just like, what am I doing? Oh, the very next day, I put a two week notice in. And, that, and they're like, wait, what? I was like, yeah, like, like people line up for this job. Like, this is a yeah, great job. And I, they was like, I mean, what are you going to do? You just started. I said, I'm, I'm going to give my real estate license. Can you, are you, you don't have to if you don't want to just say no, but like, can you tell everybody what you were making as a first year? I came out, it, it was 65, I think 65 cents, somewhere around that number in Atlanta. Uh, but here's the thing. It's good I, was, I was staying with my aunt, so I was paying minimum amount of rent, so I was saving my money. Yeah. But also, I'm living in Atlanta. 
So everything is more expensive and I'm traveling. See, I, I live in Peachtree City at the time. I'm, I'm having to travel downtown Memphis. So that's, you know, about 15 miles, but it took two hours to get there. So I'm burning gas like crazy. Um, so, you know, make it for a college kid fresh out of college. That's great money. That's my point, man. You're making this money. And then to go watch this video and say, you know what? I can make it in real estate. So right. you, you leave this job where straight out of college, you're making 65 grand and which yep. is great money straight out of college. Like a lot of people listening right now don't even make that. And now you say, okay, I'm going to go make it in real estate. Mm -hmm. So how quickly does that happen? Like, is it like a thought process? Is it a whatever? Like how quickly is that decision made uh, on oh, your end? And what do you do to make that happen? The second that I saw that he was making phone calls and meeting people in public, and I see, I'm like, if this guy can do that, I can do it. You're like, where is the, where's the surprise here? Like, where's the, I can do that. Right. What's the, and literally the conviction is so high, you leave your job. Now you still have to get your license. Right. So all that it took, so I left in March. I didn't get my license until September because I took, I took the course. The course was two and a half, three weeks. Uh, and then, but I didn't take the course as soon as I got back. I had to move back from Atlanta. I had to find a place here. I had to move everything. I had to start. Then I started calling folks. Hey, what do you know about real estate? Hey, tell me a little more about real estate. And then, so our owner, uh, Sammy Knight, who owns this Remax, he was a real good friend of uh, one of my close alliances from down there in Ole Miss. So they said, hey, I'm going to put you in contact with Sammy. Well, Sammy thought that I was calling to get an accounting job because he knew that uh, I had my accounting job. Yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah, you can, you know, go to all my Remax offices. I'm like, what is Remax? What is you, didn't, you didn't even know what Remax was. No, I, I, I didn't know what any So literally, we're talking fresh, like when we talk real estate, you're like. I, man, I was green. I'm does your, does your family, does your family at that, that point think you're nuts? Like oh, you yeah. left this job, like you worked yeah. all this time, we pay for college, we do whatever, and you just out of nowhere, like some kind of schizophrenic whatever, go, nope, I'm just yeah. gonna head on down here and uh, I'm about to go make it big, six figures, you know, whatever. Are the people around you, just be very honest with us, like, are the people around you going, like, maybe you haven't, like, you know, drank or whatever, but, but you're right. obviously on, you know, something right now. I have a message from one of my closest friends, which he texts me and was like, bro, I literally sent this message to somebody when you told him. It said, Q is leaving his job in... Atlanta, what a dummy. He's lost his mind. Yes, literally. Because in their mind, you had, you had made it. You have the secure job. You're going, yeah. you're going to be able to, to slowly, Goodbye. steadily yeah. have security, build a life. Like, what yeah. are you doing? There's so many people that would kill for that job. It's Correct. a smack in the face. Like, what do you, you went to school? Like, all of these thoughts, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So let's, <laughs> let's get through that. So now you get your license. Yep. Now, now, for everybody watching right now, uh, um, you know, to set this up, Q, you just finished your first year in real estate, right? Like, I mean, like, like I'm in year two right now. You're, yeah, two you're right in now. year two right now. Okay. So what we're going to get into, you know, I was almost going to say on this podcast, but right now we're on Facebook Live. Some will watch it on YouTube and some will listen to it on a podcast. What we're going to get into is you did 106 transactions, Okay. And that's yep. not 106, like you, you picked up a development that had 100 units in it, and then there were six others that you created. You did 106 transactions in year one, okay? Year one, now, and something I highlight is this. A lot of folks say, well, well, he played football at Ole Miss and made it easy. I did one transaction out of 106, Good. family or friend. So yeah, when I, I heard it all when I was young too, man. Like when I, when I started blowing up when I was young, everybody's got an excuse and yep. all it is is a mirror, a reflection on themselves. So they don't feel bad about themselves. Right. They, they, go, they go, if I believe that you have no advantage over me and you just went and did that, then I got to believe that I done screwed up in some way, you know? So what I need to do is I got to make some excuse about why you were able to so that yeah, I personally yeah. don't feel bad about what I'm accomplishing right now. It's, it, people do it all the time. When they, when they want to learn a new technology or they know they should, instead of actually learning it and, 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 and figuring out what it is and going through the lumps and whatever, they go, ah, it doesn't work. So yeah, now yeah. it's not about them, it's about the technology. It, it's what people do, it's what victims do, okay? It's what victims do and victims don't win. 
right? So while everybody's saying, well, he was a, he was a football player, he was a this, 106 transact, a lot of football players got their license. Correct. You didn't do 106 <laughs> transactions year one, okay? Like, it's, it, it's, it's, it's pretty simple, right? So you get your license. Yeah. And now tell me about that moment. You get your license and now do you, I almost imagine it being like, I remember when I got my driver's license, Right. And you're driving that car by yourself and you're like, I can do whatever, like, you know, your mother tells you to get bread and milk and you go to the store and get bread, you bring it home and you go back and get milk and you bring, because it's just the freedom, right? There's that moment when you're like, oh my God, I can actually make transactions happen now. Right. What do you do? Was there an aha moment? Like, did you hit a roadblock or did you just go right? Like, what did you do to start? Yeah, so looking back on it, man, I jump started my business just based off of the thought of. So, and, and I'll explain where, you know, I got my license and my, my, my owner asked me, hey, what are your goals? I flat out said, I'm, I'm gonna do 500,000 my first year. He was, he was like, whoa. He was like, you look, you're, you're young. You're, uh, you, you Nobody know, does that here. A little, a, a little naive right now, you don't understand how this business works. He said, I'll be happy if you did half of that. He said, and Q, honestly, even if you did half of that number, which is 125, I'll be even happier, man. It was, your first year may make 100 grand. First year, that's perfect. I said, look, Sammy, I don't have a backup plan. So for me, that another, was another. Can you say that again? I don't have a don't backup have plan. plan. That's, the, that's the burn the boat. There's no way getting off this island but to take this island over. I have burned the ships. I've set sail and I burned the ships. I'm going to make it work. But what happened was, it was just a thought of, like I was making all these phone calls and I had all these people saying, hey, yes, we're going to sell. Hey, yes, we're going to buy with you. Hey, I had a land deal that, man, it fell through probably a month later, but it was- How's that, feel? How's that feel? I mean, it's devastating, oh, right? Like, was, here's the thing. I'm so, I'm so young and new to it that I don't understand what fall through means. I was just like, well, it didn't happen, you know, but it was a thought of that kept me going where I can make $10,000 in this one deal. Oh my God! I'm just gonna keep going. I got ten thousand coming. I'm gonna keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. So, so in other words, in other words, um, you were you were motivated by the idea that you know there really is no limit. There's no ceiling. Like there, there, most there, most jobs that tell you there's no limit on what you can make, it means right. you're gonna be broke soon, and it's your fault. Right. Real estate is one of those ones where legitimately, if you start every day at zero and you you, what would I do if I was desperate? What right. would I do if I wasn't afraid of being rejected? What would I do if my kids are going to die if I don't make a transaction happen today? What would I do? Like, it's the one thing where you can legitimately be as motivated as you want, act like nothing ever happened and create more every day. And there's not a situation where the broker is going to come in and say, hey, Q, people are starting to talk. You know, you might want to settle down, not do as many transactions. Like, that's not our, our industry is. You can fail horribly, but you can also absolutely take off and you love yeah. that yep and, and that made me get up every day so I, I was making 200 calls a day just cold calls just wait you were making 200 calls a day yes i was i was i, I downloaded red x i was like, like a, a dialer or you're doing one call two call three call or you yeah. do three four calls at a time no before before i got red x i was hand dialing and then ricky introduced me to red x so i got red x so I was triple down down. So now I can I can dial quick. Three calls at a time, and and just sure. who are you who are you calling? I was just calling around listings. I was calling sellers, you know, and that's the name of the game. Is what I've learned is you have to have the sellers to last. So list to last is what they say. But you know, I understood that. So you know what I said? If I call sellers, if I can be the only person calling them, versus calling for sale by owners and expires, I just call them this cold call. I can get two transactions out of one. I can get, yeah, they're going to sell, they're going to have to buy, or if they don't sell, they're going to rent and all the different, crazy, crazy. From the different. beginning, you kind of broke it down. And by the way, for everybody watching, I want to say this one more time. If you're watching right now, let us know where you're coming in from. Let us know if you have a question below. My team will let me know what that is. And hit that share button because we're going to get into the nitty gritty now. And I think it'll help a lot of your, your colleagues. So from the beginning, that same way that your brain worked from a numbers perspective, when numbers make sense, everything makes sense. You kind of broke it down and you said, sellers are where it's at. Because with a seller, I most of the time have somebody who's not only sold, but I can, I can double end that because now they've got to go somewhere else. And so why am I not targeting these people? 
what, right. what I'm curious from with you, because the, because everyone knows that, but it, it, it just because we know something doesn't mean we do it. We all know we should exercise to stay in shape and yet people don't. Right. right. So how do you kind of separate your feeling of being rejected? Because when you're making 200 calls a day, that yep. means that you are literally hearing no from more people every day than almost anybody in your area. Like you are literally the most rejected person in your area while you're trying to become the most successful person in your area. Right. How as a young person do you deal with the fact that no matter how well I do today, I'm going to be the most rejected person in this area today? It was very simple for me. And I'm big on um, not caring what people think. So, and I've always been like that. I don't, I don't care. I don't care what you think about me. It's just whatever. But it was so easy when I said, I don't know this person from Adam. They don't know me. There it is. Five minutes prior to when I called them, they didn't know me. I didn't care what they thought about me. Five minutes after the call is done, unless they're doing business with me, I'm not going to care what they think. So I'm going to call them anyway. They're going to be rude? Okay, fine. So because I truly believe in there's an unlimited amount of people out there that will only do business with me. I just have to find them. They don't have to find me. I have to go out and find them. So I'm calling around, calling around. I'm calling for those people who want to do business with me. The folks who don't, kick rocks. So we're not, not, we're not personalizing. And that's no. the thing that I always try to get across to agents Ooh. is when someone says no, we have this whole history in our head of like who I am, how much I've sold, I'm respected, my family loves me. And the moment they don't show you that same respect because they don't have that story. They don't have that, 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 that narrative with you. We so internalize it. Like, oh my God, how could they, they don't know you. They don't know you. But in the, meantime, in the meantime, someone else is going and working with someone that should have been yours. And right. when you really think about it, it means someone else is walking around with your money. Right. And, and we live in a world where if someone owed someone $20 and didn't pay them back, they'd be dead to them. They'd be like, until they pay me back, they're dead to me. And yet they're allowing people in their area to steal money from their pockets, their family, whatever, because they don't want to get rejected by a stranger who doesn't even know who they are, what they look like, where they're from, nothing. And Correct. so they let everyone else walk around with their clients. Yep. And so you and saw so that early on. I saw it early on, man. I was like, you know, I'm going to make the call. Either they're going to like me or they're not. See, and the thing was, the calls were great. They were working. They started to click. What really started to hit home is when I started going in public, door knocking, grocery stores, and showing my personality. You know, and, and I don't, like I said, I'm not a cocky person at all, but I realize that I can make people laugh. I'm funny. I'm, people like being around me. Right? You wanted to humanize yourself. You wanted to separate yourself from just some guy behind a call and Correct. say, let you experience me. Like, like I'm, I'm, I'm a good dude. You're going to like me. It's going right. to be much more difficult to reject me after you meet me than it is to have some, some, some noise over a phone, some voice over a phone. Yes. So I started going to uh, neighborhoods. And what really did it for me, I had a client. I, uh, it wasn't my client at, at that time, but later they called me back to list of house. But simply, I knocked on their door, all right? Knocked on their door, and they was like, well, no, we're not interested in selling. And he reminded me of it when I sat down across the table. He said, you know why we pick you? I was like, no, sir. He said, well, you knocked on our door, was one. But he said later that day around five o'clock, because I, I hit him probably around 1.30. He said later that day around five o'clock, uh, do you remember where you were? I was like, well, no, probably, if it's five o'clock, I'm probably at a grocery store. I know I'm going to go to store around five. He was like, you at Kroger, passing out business cards, talking to folks in the grocery store. And he said, I, I, I said, Dan, he's working hard. He's walked from, because it's probably about three miles. So you showed him, you showed him, yes. when you work but, with me, this is how hard I'm going to work to get your property sold. Right, but I didn't, I didn't even know that I knocked on his door and he later came to Kroger to see me. Wow. So that feared me. That was like, well, shoot, I need to knock on more doors. I need to go to Kroger. You were like, if I can make that happen once, if those, if those two things can come together yes. and happen, I can make that happen again. Right. So and more I, importantly, if I don't do these things, I give it zero chance for that to happen again. Correct. Correct. So, and it was, it's more so like, well, dang, if I knock on more doors and I go to Kroger more, more folks will start knowing me and more folks can relate to that. I can get more business and man, it's, it's, it started happening. 
So uh, how did you decide like which neighborhoods to go to and what are you saying to them? Like, like no. are, you, are, you, are you circle prospecting? Are you going around a listing? Are you just going to no. random neighborhoods and being like, hey, I'm yeah. cute. What I do is I look at the MLS. If a listing, is, uh, you know, if it's not my listing, of course, I look at it and say, okay, dang, this house went up today. See, I understand down the business. I understand the the business because I used to sit down and ask people, okay, when I get a listing, what do I need to do? Oh, you need to send out just listed cards. You need to send out this, this, this. Which are gonna, which are gonna take a few days to Here's get the to the neighborhood. It takes three to five business days for those cards to hit. It takes me three to five hours to leave my desk, go to that neighborhood, knock on every single door and leave a business card. Oh, I love that. Be I'm gonna beat them to the punch. So I used to look in the MLS. Wait, did you actually before you even go for? Did you actually like think like that? Like when you in your yeah. head, were you going, okay, so this is how this works. So they're gonna circle prospect. Everyone's afraid of rejection, so they're gonna they're gonna just mail them out and hope somebody yeah. responds. That's gonna take three to five days. I can be in that neighborhood in three to five hours and get there before that agent because we know that there's potential sellers, potential buyers in that area whenever a listing comes up. So I'm gonna. Yeah. Beat that. Were you thinking like that? At first, no. But when I asked, like I said, I asked someone, hey, when I get a listing, uh, what do I need to do? And they said that. And that clicked. I was like, oh, so that's, that's what y'all do? I was like, oh, well, I'm just going to start using your listings. Uh, I didn't tell the person. I was like, I'm just going to start using the listings as my listings. And I'm just going to knock on the doors before they send out the cards. But then uh, what happened was, though, I went my first month uh, with nothing on the board. But within 45 days, I had a client who's looking to buy a house. So wait, so first I, 30 days, you're doing this stuff and nothing's happening. Are you getting, are you getting discouraged? No, no. Simply because, like I said, I had that land deal that was pending. Like it was literally. So it gave you some security. Yes. I had, I had a thought of, I can make 10,000. I was like, well, sure, I'm just gonna keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. But then day 45, it was like 46, 47. Uh, I had someone call me, was looking to buy a house, and we put them under contract. But I was so new and green to the business, I let an agent take 50% of my money just to show me how to do it. That's how green and dumb I was. See what I'm saying? So, but, but it, it happened. So uh, I have that on the board, and I'm just like, okay, I need to get more. Where I start, I've, I've been calling 200 people for the last 30 days. And you're still, you're just still calling 200 people, 200 people. And it's not that none of those people worked out. It's that it takes some time. People don't get married on the first date. It just takes some time. People start calling back. By the third month, so it went from 40, 45 days, one, to now I'm in within that 90-day period. 45 days meaning one closing or 45 days, one pending? No, 45 days I had one pending. Pending, okay. I, I, by the end of my 90 days, so I, I got started late August, September. By November, I had 10 closings on the board. So so one pending after 45 days, but after three months, 10 pending, or 10 closings. 10 I, went, closings. I, went from, I went from one to 10. And that is because every day you are, you are making your phone calls, you're, you're finding, you're not just hearing the listings and sending stuff out. You're going to the neighborhood where those things are. You've got no fear. What are you yep. saying when you're, are you bringing the publicly listed MLS? Like, what are you saying when you're going to those neighborhoods? Uh, um, some neighborhoods, I, what I do is I type a letter uh, on, you know, what, my message for the day. And I, 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 I consider that like a drive-by. What I do is regardless, I'm going to knock on the doors every single time. But regardless if they answer or not, I'm going to leave it. And if they answer the door, I say, hey, my name is Quint Davis. I'm with Remax. In this letter is some information I think, you know, I'll catch your attention. Just read it. If you have any questions, give them a call. And then other times, I would just take my business card and I will tell them, hey, you know, you got the house right down the road that just listed. I'm not sure if you guys know it's probably going to have a lot of activity. Um, you, you should probably watch it simply because if there's three or four cars out here, you know, there's one person that can get the house. Um, if you guys have thought about potentially selling and buying something new, now's the time. And, so, uh, I mean, let, let's be honest then. I mean, this isn't even like, these are just standard messages. Yeah, just, I mean, this is like, you know, there's yeah. no like crazy, like I'm listening to you right now and I'm yeah. going, oh my God, dude, I can, I can help your rates so much with some templates we can give you and with some stuff, but it didn't matter. Like didn't matter, you were in a place where it was like, okay, well, everybody else is, is creating the perfect plan to whatever. 
I'm just out there in front of people, right? Like I'm just one after another, after another, after another, like you can't stop me. Like I'm going to get in front of more people. I'm going to be the most rejected person in this area. Yo, but then that's going to make me the most successful. I'm going to talk to more people than my competition. That was my mindset. How are you tracking that? Like, how are you knowing who you've talked to or who you haven't? Or at this that's point, do you even have a system or you just kind of make it up? A, occasionally, people are calling you you're going, yeah, I remember. Man, I am, like, I was so bad. And I'm still bad to the day of it. I didn't have a clue of how to track it. Man, I've never called a person more than once. Wait, 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 wait. So every day you're calling new people. New like people. someone says, hey, check back, whatever. How are you keeping track so, of the call back? So after about six months, that's when I put together my four point system, which has been golden. It has helped me reach levels I've never thought I could reach. All right, so but, tell everyone because we talked about, and we do this with our students. We have a point system that we do with yep. people. So I love when you said this. So tell people yep. what, what it is and why you created it. Right, so first what I want to do is tell them, you know, how I was doing it at first. Simply, at first, I would call everybody. I would save the numbers or not save the numbers, but I would never call them again because I'm calling different people every single day. The people, when they call me back, I used to simply ask, hey, I talked to so many folks uh, throughout the day, throughout the week. Can you remind me of your address? I know you said to register the attention sell it. Uh, remind me of your address again. Just ask that simple question. I mean, the people, they, they know I can't remember everybody, and they like to earn it, so they tell them again. But after my Four point system. So it's t literally, it, it reminded me of football. If I scored a touchdown this week, I can't roll that touchdown over to next week and it counts right. on the board. So just like my four points, I get four points every single day. And four points is this a contract sign, putting a deal through in escrow is four points. Getting a listing agreement sign, that's two points. Meeting or uh, showing buyers houses, that's one point. So for one buyer, if you show them five houses, that's one point. But if you show two buyers, you show one of them one house, one of them two houses, you get two points. You get a point for each buyer. And then meeting potential customers looking to do business in 90 days, it's a half a point. That's what that money is. That's what the opportunity is. So for you, so for you, it was about, so again, this is almost exactly what we do with our students. I love that you did this. So you said, I've got to get four points a day, right? Four points and, every you, day. and you created what those points were going to be. And yep. then that's how you know when you've had a successful day. It's not about how busy you are. It's not about how much right. activity you've had. It's not how much. I, I, I've said for years, man, there's a big difference between busyness, B-U-S-Y, and business, B-U-S-I, right? Yep. Some people are too busy to ever actually be productive. And right. so you're like, hey, how do I put this in a thing where I'm doing the right thing? So you assign points and said, my day is complete when I reach four points. When I get four points, I can... I do one of two things. I can shut it down and go home, relax. And that's how I avoided burnout. Here, you know, uh, when I got four points, it was like, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just here now. I don't have to be here right now. It's, it's, it's nothing like working. So the pressure's it's off easy. once you hit your four points because you know that's going to make you reach your goals. Correct. That's it. So then, you know, either I can continue to, to work and everything is just overtime. And it's not, oh, I got four points. I stayed and I worked. I ended up getting eight points. I'm just going to roll forward to the next day. Uh-uh, no, no, no. You get four points every single day. And here's the beauty of it. As you, if you've noticed, you get zero points for closings. Closings, that's, that, that's not an act of, of, of business. It's not an act of being productive. That's a result of everything that you've done. Closing is just get, simply a result of the actual items that lead to a closing. So you don't, get, you don't get credit for closings. You got credits for what led to it. Correct. There we go. So, you know, every single day I get four points. It's been days I got 22 points. But the very next day when I wake up, I have zero. I have to go out and get four again. And that kind of set me up, man, to run no matter because it's easy to get five or six deals on the contract and you're like, well, shoot, I'm, I just made 30000 this month. Yeah, cool. Sit back and relax, yeah. No. Four points a day is going to tell you I have to keep going. I have to keep chasing that. So, so, you, so you're, so you're, if stay off the roller coaster, four points is, look, I said to you this when, when we talked the first time and I, and it fits again, like so much of what you do fits the stuff that, that I teach. And, you know, we yep. say focus on results, you'll get frustration. Focus on process, you'll get results, right? Sure. And that, that's essentially what you're doing is you're saying, forget about the closings, forget about whatever. I need four points. And forget about yesterday I had eight points or yesterday I killed it or two day, whatever. You don't bring a touchdown over from another game and get to put it in on this game. Nope. Every single day is different. 
And until sure. I score my touchdown today, until I get my four points today, it doesn't matter. I did not, you know, there's, a, there's the old, I win the day. There's no right. win the day. There's no, what, what is, what is your, what's your average price point where you are? Uh, 170 to 180 average okay. price point. Okay. Uh, so, you know, a lot of folks say, well, this agent in California did the same volume as you, but they only sold 10 houses because their average price point is 1.5 million or Dude, I get it all the time with the HGTV. I, I sold this many millions. That's four houses. Like right. where I come from selling four houses, you're a failure. That's, that's, that's not how I want to run my business, I, I would say. Because simply, what people understand is um, you, need, you need past clients to have a business. So if you only get four past clients per year, yeah. come on now, they're not going to sell. Eventually, you're going to run out. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you get 50 or 100, Eventually, 15 to 20 of those folks in five years are going to sell regardless. Then, so that's 30 deals automatically. It, it's the cumulative effect, right? Like, it's. Yeah, it's right. I want to get into that. I want to get into that. So, I have to really quickly here, we're at the halfway point. Um, we give away on all of these. We do a yearly event called the Jared James Advance. We bring, uh, this year it's in Nashville. We do a two-day event uh, for our yeah. students and followers and whatever. So, every, every one of these, when we do them live, we give away a free ticket. So if you're watching right now and you, uh, you want the chance to win a free ticket to the uh, 2020 Jared James Advance, do me a favor, take a picture of this screen or take a picture of yourself watching this screen, uh, uh, put it up on Facebook and Instagram and just uh, tag me at Jared James today uh, on Instagram everywhere I'm at Jared James today. Tag me on that. We will pick a winner within 24 hours uh, so that you can uh, uh, potentially get that ticket to Nashville. Uh, so post that. Put uh, at Jared James today and make sure you share this, guys. Like, like I keep saying, we want as many people as possible to hear this info uh, because we think it's going to help a lot of people. So uh, hit that share button and that will give you a little extra credit. All right. So I want to kind of get into this here because I still am not 100% sure on this. Like, are you, are you even using like a CRM? Are you even like, how are you like, oh, like I, I know this already and I'm going, holy crap. Like, we got to fix some things here. Like, how to use all that stuff, man? I don't. I honestly, you know, I, I talk to Boomtown and all that. I, I don't know how it works. I don't know what I know how to work is my iPhone. I know how to save a number. I know how if you're a seller or a buyer to put that in that little company tab right there in your iPhone. Yep. That's the first last name. Yep. Then you got company. I know how to store it there. I know how to search that when it's time for me to do my follow up. That's what I know how to do. You're, I mean, you're, you're essentially, it's the same process. Like, you know, I mean, I run a company that has CRMs and stuff. Like, you're basically using, like, an app on a CRM, basically. You're just doing it with your phone. The part you're missing is the automatic follow-ups, the reminders, right. the past, the all right. that kind of stuff. Right. But you still did 106 transactions. Like, did you have any help? Did you, right. you buyer's agents going out? Right. Uh, did you find a way to multiply, you know, the hours in a day? Like, like how is this happening? How are you <laughs> tracking transactions like it's how putting, it's putting everything in a system so i had a little checklist sheet i think i have one here here we go so i just go down i just sit in here and go down a checklist on every single file make sure it's done just old school just oh yeah that's it i'm not doing anything fancy like i said i don't know any better i'm still a brand new agent you know like i have so much that i can learn and get better at and it's ridiculous like, I love it. You're reading off of a paper. Like, okay, step 12. We need to make sure we do this. That's it. That's it, man. I'm still cold call. I'm still, like I said, I didn't spend one dime on leads, marketing, advertising. Just like, calls. Just calls, calls, calls. calls. I out there. So I tell a lot of agents, they, I didn't tell an agent come in last night uh, and see just like, hey, how much do I need to spend for my advertising? I was like, what do you mean? You have a listing? She was like, no, I just wanted to put myself out there. I said, you need to spend one token. You need to get out there. They were like, oh, no, I'm shamed. Well, hey, that's something you're going to have to fix. I can't fix if you're ashamed to go out. Yeah, but that's the business, business for that, right? That's like an actor right. saying they don't want to be in front of the camera. Yes, yes. I, I, you just have to practice it over and over and over again to where you're confident. But I told her, I said, hey, you, you know, you, you spend, uh, what is it, 800 bucks a month for Boomtown, and you don't get a closing in 90 days, you're out of 2,400 bucks. Right. Now you're, you're, 
you're playing from behind. It's like going into halftime saying, you know, you know what, we're gonna spot them 21 points halftime. We'll come back out and, and we'll make all that back. No, you don't never do that. Yeah, you're going, you're going, you're you're a brand new agent. Why why are you uh, unless you got some savings built up, you're, you're you're putting yourself in a position where you can't come from a position of strength. Okay. So now you put yourself to where folks say, well, you know, I only have 90 days of reserves. But why on God's earth will you spend that 90 days of reserves on freaking real estate? So you're you're basically like so we always call it it's commonly known you have sweat equity and check equity. There we go. My thing has always been especially as a new agent. Look, there's a lot of people spending a lot of money in real estate and it works for them because they've got the infrastructure. They I've never understood people buying leads when they don't even have a CRM. Like you're, there's no way it's going to work. But from your perspective, you were looking at it going I'm new. This is sweat equity all day long. Yeah. I may not have this 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 ton of money where I can, you know, waste and see if something works or not. But I can sure as heck spend time and just call, 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 get in front of people, get in front of people, get in front of people. That's it. And did you have an assistant or anything? Like, did you, like, literally, I mean, is it just you? Like, I hired my first assistant. Um, I was eight months into the business. Uh, so I think it was around June is when I hired her. From September to June, I was by myself. Did you so know I what hired, you were doing? Like, like in all honesty, did you know what you were doing when you hired them? Meaning, did you know how to hire them? Did you know disc profiles? Did you know what I system? I one of my clients' wives. That's what I did. And it was, I didn't, it, you know, I learned, I just let her go about a month and a half ago. So I'm back to, on, on my own again. But I learned, you know, I have to do a better job of vetting uh, folks that I come, I bring in to make sure they fit. And basically what I did was I brought her in. I gave her one of these and said, hey, this is what we need to do on each single file. As long as you're going down this checklist, you're checking my email every day, you're responding, you're telling me stuff that I need to go back and look at, you're good. See, the problem came in was she would do this one, but she wouldn't check it out. Or she would do this one and wouldn't check it out. So when I come in and I look at it, I'm like, hey, why isn't this done? Oh, it's done. Why isn't it checked out? It's, and it wasn't, a lot of folks say, well, he wasn't patient enough. No, I was very patient. It was it's to the point where I sat down and I said, hey, you know, uh, th this is why I need you to do this. It's not simply because for you to know, it's simply when I come back in and I look at it, it gives me peace of mind. If it's checked off, I know it's done versus if it's not and I have to ask you. So let's make sure we check it out. The next time it goes right, it don't happen. It was about, it took- And once you lose trust, like with your type of personality, once that trust yeah. is lost, now you're just not, you're not trusting it. it it's out of here. And it, it was simply, I was like, well, okay, if I'm having to go back, double, triple check everything, make, tell you over and over to check it off on the list. I might as well do it myself the first time and be done with it. So I said, you, you know what you're describing though. So, so I mean, I, I run a marketing company. We do TCs, transaction coordinators. Why did you never get a TC? Like, did, did no one just teach you that? Did no one just, because I'm literally, I'm listening to you. You know, no like, clue, look, I'm, the training side of the hat is coming on right now, the coach side. Yeah. We, we train people right now from an infrastructure perspective, before an assistant, before any of them, the number one hire that you make right now is a TC, a transaction coordinator, to the point where like I started a whole department where we now offer them because of that. And the reason is a couple of things. Number one, there's no risk. You mm -hmm. only pay when it closes. Like you don't right. pay when it doesn't close. They're handling what makes you great as an agent is what makes you terrible as a transaction coordinator. Like, they're organized, they're, they're for it. They're, they want to sit, be quiet and get those things done. You want to be out there, you know, like live it, you know, whatever. Right. So like that makes it worth it, you know, but it also, the other reason why it's the number one hire you make in real estate is because it teaches you, it teaches you how to delegate. It teaches you that you can trust people to do things even better than you would do them because it fits their personality profile. Right. And grabbing some client's wife and be like, here, go ahead, do this, whatever, is never going to work. That's like the other thing people do is they grab failed agents in the area who, yeah. who aren't going to make yeah. it. They go, they go, hey, uh, I need an assistant. Uh, you obviously suck at your job. You're not making it. Why don't you come over here and suck at this job? And maybe if, uh, maybe if this works out, you'll start making money under me and you'll leave me and go back out in the world. And like, what? It makes no sense right have you ever even studied like like disc profiles like personality profiles okay so a tc transaction coordinator is a high c a high s they're organized they're at it like they, this is what they do right I'm telling you right now that is 100 percent what you need because there's no risk if you got one and you hated them you're not in a contract you don't like 
there's no risk before you start bringing on a salaried admin or, or, you know, one of those kind of things. That's your absolute first move, right? Have you, have you tried like since that went not so well with the first admin, did you try to get another or did you kind of lose confidence? Did you get too busy and just say, Oh, we'll, we'll refigure this out later. Where are you at? That's exactly where I am. I said, Hey, you know what? I'm going to finish off what I have. I don't want to bring anyone in and throw 20 deals at them. What I want to do is get to a point to where I got all my deals under control. I know what things are that I can have time to go back and say, hey, this is exactly what I need. I'm more patient to, you know, interview in. I've, I've got to the point where I want to. Uh, I need the right time. person. Right. I'm going to find the, the right person for me. And it's going to take some time. I don't care if it takes two months, but I'm, I'm going to take the proper time it is that I need uh, to find that right person. But a lot of this thing, like I said, man, I'm a brand new agent still. Uh, yeah. That's what people don't understand. Like a lot yeah. of stuff I don't know yet. And I'm going to learn. I'm willing, see, I'm willing to learn. You know, I have yeah. all this business going on, but I'm also willing to step back and say, hey, I'm not that perfect agent yet. I don't know everything. And, and I'm going to seek those who do and say, hey, teach me. And you you hustled and gritted your way. Like you basically said, there's no other option. Like you said, you burnt the boats, right? And I yeah. want to talk about what's going on in your second year. But before we do that, have you even explored, like, like what is your percentage listings to buyers? Uh, that, uh, I, I, I've never just sat down and looked at the numbers. I know uh, I do more listings than I deal with buyers. Are and you showing all of your buyers? Like, are you basically like every buyer that wants to see properties, every whatever, like, are you going out and showing every buyer? Yeah, right now, yeah. Wow. Have you even, like, uh, have you even um, uh, looked at the idea or, 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 you know, at all as far as, like, getting a buyer's agent or, or using a referral so, agent in the office or, like, any, any kind of exploration like that? Yeah, what I have now is, well, when I say currently, not currently, like, today, what I have, I have three agents in my office. If a buyer don't call me directly and say, hey, man, I speak with Quintavious, um, I sent them to these three agents in my office, one of three of them, and they work with the buyers. Uh, that has allowed me to free my time up more, but also just focus on my sellers. But, uh, you know, I still have some buyers who I deal with that calls me or referral, uh, that, you know, but as far as just everybody that picked up the phone who want to work, I look at it now. Kind of send it out now. But are you still prospecting? Like, are you still now? You do 106 transactions. You're entering the second year. Like, what is your daily schedule look like now? Like, when do you get up? When do you go to bed? What does your schedule look like? How do you balance between clients you're working with and then that I need my four points every day? Tell me a little bit about that. So uh, I'm 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 not a time guy. I'm a task guy. So I have three. I have a board in there. I wish I could bring it in and show it to you. Uh, whereas it tells me. Sunday through so actually I can let me grab it real quick for you. Do it, man. Do it. I got no problem with that. Guys, again, while we're waiting for him to come back, if you're enjoying this, uh, give it a like, uh, leave a comment, ask a question, or let us know where you're coming in from and hit that share button. Uh, let's get this information out to as many people as we can. Like this board here, it doesn't have any time on it. It's just three blocks every single day what I need to do. So uh, the only time I saw was door knock after 5 p.m. Yeah. It tells me every day, like if I look at it, today is Tuesday. Um, I have to call, I have to follow up, I have to make 200 calls. But it's, it don't say do it by this certain time because what happens is, and what I've learned, if I set a time to it and it's past that time simply because I'm busy or I woke up late or something like that. I'm like, dang, I'm behind. But if I don't, if I look at my schedule, regardless if I woke up at 7 o'clock this morning, I'm going to get all three of those things done. Or if I want to sleep in and wake up at 10, I'm going to get all three of those things done. Every single so day. you simplify your schedule. You, yeah. you basically look at the highest use of time. Like that's, You're looking at the highest use of time and going, what's most important right now? The process that's going to get me to the result I need is I've got to make 150 phone calls. Okay. And I've got it. So really 150 phone calls. If you're doing three at a time, it's really like 50 calls that's going three at a time. Right. So I've got to make 150 phone calls. I've got to follow up with my list over here that I have here. And after 5 PM, I've got to go door knock this neighborhood, you know, however long that's going to take. It's about the higher level ideals and then everything else just kind of fits into place. Everything else just fits in the box. And as you see, like there's on every single day, 
um, there's a rest open, rest open. So the open time is that downtime that everyone needs to walk around the office, to chat, to talk to other folks, get on the phone, look on Instagram, to make phone calls that's not real estate related. Rest is simply, I'm gonna hang out. I'm not going to the office, might not leave my house. If I do, it's gonna be going somewhere to do some business, um, but it's, it won't be real estate related. It's, it's, it's gonna be either I'm looking at my rentals or I'm gonna go to the football. It's something different. So I'm a, it's built into my schedule already. You know, uh, but makes sense. yeah, yeah, yeah. So every day I know exactly what I have to do, but it's also some other things that will come up that needs to be done. Like I said, so that's why I don't say, well, I have to do it by eight, I have to do it by nine. But to answer your question, what time I wake up every day, man, it's different. Like I don't have a true wake up at this time. My alarm goes off every day at 5.30 a.m. But sometimes I get on up and I go, go to the gym right then and there on some days. I turn it off and I put put another alarm for seven thirty. As long as you get your higher level items done, it does as not long matter. As I get four points a day, and the thing is, that's a standard for me. It's not a goal. It's not a wish. It's a standard. As long as I get four points a day, who cares what time I woke up? Because nine times out of ten, I will be up late sometimes, anyways. So yeah. I'm like, you know, when my alarm goes up, if I know I'm gonna have a rough day, I know it's gonna be a tough long day. Yep. I'm like. I mean, why would I get up right now? I know I'm going to be in the office at 9 o'clock tonight. I'm going to sleep in. You know? Uh, and I respond to the emails and calls when I get up. And then some days I hop on up and I'm done by 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Because I've done everything. I've got my four points and I'm, I'm just chilling. Everything else is like bonus. So it, it's different days. And the folks are like, man, how do you not burn out? Simply because, like, for me, now, four points, it's easy. But it's supposed to be easy at this point. But it's, and some folks say, well, why don't you raise it to five? Because I, I, I've identified what my success looks like. Yeah. And if you think about it, any way that you get four points, if you can do that every single day, yeah. it's going to be awesome. If you get a contract every single day, just think about what that is. If you get two listings every day, or if you're showing four different buyers every day, or if you meet eight potential customers looking to do business in 90 days every single day, like it's going to get to a point where you can't handle it. You know what I mean? So screw, so screw the busy work, screw the whatever. These are what determined that my day has been successful. Whereas right. most people are so romantic about the idea of how busy they are. They've got a sun up to sun down. That way they don't appear lazy. It's like half the crap they're doing doesn't even matter. And oh, you're yeah. going, look, if it doesn't add to my points, what are we doing here? Yeah. Okay. So, so I want to get into your year two stuff. I do want to say though, like there's so much I want to say about this because there's so much stuff we could do, man, to just blow you up right now. Um, huge missed opportunity right now. I said TC. TC is a huge one. Now, when I mentioned CRM, do you have anything for email marketing or anything? Or are you just all in your phone? Okay, so that's something we got to fix because that is over time, the, the cumulative growth of that to what it's going to do for you for business with your SOI, with your referrals, with your content, like all of that stuff. While you're making all these calls and making these contacts, your database could be massive right now, right? And the larger someone's database is, the larger their business is always going to be. Email marketing is the most underrated thing in business today. If you go talk to any, everybody wants to talk about internet marketing and talk about, and all that stuff. Look, I get that stuff up and down. But behind the scenes, when I talk to a lot of my friends, the big internet marketers everybody knows, do you know what we still know is the most effective marketing around? Email marketing. There's nothing that drives more people to a product, to a service, to a training, to a, you know, whatever it is than email marketing. So there's a, there's a missed opportunity there from the perspective of collecting all of this info, not just having it in one place where if I search them, they're there, but being able to collectively at mass get a message across or get, have them, have them um, uh, uh, categorized by your investors. And you know these kind of buyers and these kind of sellers and these kind of and now you've got an investment property that comes up and it's a buy and hold or it's a flip or it's a and you know how to get to those specific people. You and I will talk about that another day. That's that's yeah, a story yeah, yeah. for another day. Cool. Tell me about year two. So you do year one. You're obviously getting all these accolades. You got people like me reaching out and going, you know, and going, hey, awesome, I want to talk to you. Like I want to. That's got to feel awesome. But then there's also, you got to fight off complacency. Right. You know, you got to fight off the idea of, is he a one trick wonder? You know, Grady came in and did whatever. Tell me about year two. Tell me what's going on. Tell me what, what, what is it that's motivating you? Where are you at? 
Has anything changed? Tell me about year two. So everything with me is centered, you know, centered around athletics. And it, there's a thing where you give a guy a contract and you go out and have a good year and he's due for another contract, a big one. With some uh, teams, they make him have a prove it year. This is my prove it year. They say, oh, yeah, he did this first year. It was a fluke. He had X, Y, Z. Well, do it two times back to back to back. Now you have a trend going. So my goal was going into year two uh, was simply to be my prove it year. A lot of folks say, well, why you didn't raise the bar and all this? You're being complacent. No, I'm not. I'm going through my pace, my schedule, my plan that I have in place. And once I hit it, you will see what your five is going to look like. And my goal in your five is number one in the world. Not just Remax, not just Mississippi, the world. And I understand what those numbers look like. I understand now I have 200 closed sales uh, under my belt. I understand now how I have to grow, what I need to grow. I'm talking to more people like yourself on bettering myself. That way, by the time year five comes, I have everything in place, working and working to where now I'm outside of the business looking. Un understanding that you, you'll never be number one in the world on your own, right? Like. No. Like I, I did a video last year that went kind of viral where I talked about this lie that we all have 24 hours in a day. That's bull crap. We don't all have 24 hours. We right. all have the hours according to the number of people in our infrastructure that we can leverage. So right. if you've got 24 and I've got 40 people working for me, I've got a thousand hours, right? right. And it's a, it's a difference between running a business and running around. It's about building a company. It's about right. building something that's not just around you, where everyone always thinks that you're everything and you're, that's not how you build a company. That, that's how you burn out, right? And so can you tell me a little bit, um, is year two, and I don't even know the answer to this, but is year two, especially with everything that, that just happened, uh, uh, is year two going like you expected? Are you behind? Are you ahead? Are you like, where are you for year two? Yeah, so um, I did numbers. And I don't like talking about, you know, commission and income and all that, but I'm only 150 away from the magic number. From the magic number you set for yourself this year, which how much more, how much longer is left in this year for you? Six months. Okay. So, so you're gonna. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so now from your perspective, are you looking, and I hope you really are, man, like, You've proven that you can look. It's the difference between an all-star and a, and, a, and a Hall of Famer. Can you do yep. it over and over and over again, right? Yep. You've proven that you're going to succeed in this business. Are you now at the point? And don't just say it because I'm sitting here, but like, are you at the point now where you are starting to look at infrastructure and business models and and yep. systems that are necessary, the right software that's necessary to say, I okay, I proved I can hustle my way to kick and tail around here. But if I want to hit that next level on a global scale or on a, you know, a national scale or on a whatever, are you at that point where you're open to those things? Or are you still kind of like, I'm just going to keep hustling this and see where I can go? No, see, what I, what, what I want to have in place is by year five, I want to be totally out of the hustle. You know, year two, I'm all hustle still. Year three, four, I want to have some of the infrastructure there, most of it, but I still want to be out and hustle. Right. I want to make it to where you're five, I can hustle the button and everything works. The business is running itself now. You can stop in, see yeah, what's right. going on, but you have an actual business now. You have a, you know, like, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. I love to hear that. I love, I love to hear that. What is this like, what has this done to your personal life? Uh, because I know a lot of people listening right now when they hear 106 transactions in year one and they, mm -hmm. they hear about all these calls and they hear about all this stuff. They're, I'll just be very honest. They're at home right now or at the office. Yep. They're listening and they're like, that's awesome, but I'd never want it because this guy obviously has no life. And even though he's 25, he's probably on his fourth marriage. And you know, like this is what they're thinking. I mean, I'm just being honest. Like if you're thinking that and you're watching right now, just like write yes in the comments, okay? Like, like I promise you people are thinking that, okay? Don't, don't rosy it up for me, okay? I know, I know you're engaged. Your fiance is gonna see this. And usually yeah. there's a disconnect between well, how the man thinks the relationship going and how the woman thinks the relationship is going. So how has this affected your personal life? Like, do you do anything for hobbies? Does, has your fiance uh, ever seen you? Um, yeah. so, like, there's windows, you know, uh, whereas I let her know, hey, 
This week is a grind week. And she, she know what that means? It, it, it's a grind week. I might not be home till nine o'clock. But here's the thing. With the four points in place, I have so much free time. Like, it's amazing. Like, people, my, my, my broker, he'll tell you, he's like, why are you always just around here BSing around? I'm like, shoot, I got four points today. I'm done. I can go home right now, you know? But uh, my free time, it, it, it all depends on, like, the day. You know, some days I'm here, like I said, until 9 o'clock at night. But some days I'm home again free uh, at 11 o'clock in the morning. At home doing nothing and hanging out playing Fortnite. What, what uh, determines, oh, God, now that my son's going to hear that. He's probably going to try to friend you on there or whatever you call it on Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, uh, but what determines a grind week? Like, how do you know that a week, I, did you say grind week or what did you call it? Today is a grind day. Okay, so like, what determines that? Like, how do you know that? What, what, what in your mind goes, okay, this one's going to be a doozy? Upcoming events. Like, I know this week I'm leaving at 8 a.m. going to Nashville until Monday just to hang out with, with some of my friends, some of my buddies. They're training in Nashville. So we're all going to load up. We're going to go and hang out. I understand that, which means I have to fit Sunday to Sunday now into Sunday to Thursday. In your mind, you got to make it up. I got to make it up. Oh, there, there's no question in my mind. Do you, do you, do you double it. your points? Uh, and by the way, somebody asked in the questions, can you one more time tell us what equals points? Yes. So uh, a contract is four points. You get a deal in escrow, it's four points. A listing agreement, hey, come sell my house. We're going to sign a listing. We sign it. That's two points. Showing a buyer around is one point. You show one buyer 10 houses, sorry, you get one point. One point. You show two buyers three houses, you get two points. For showing it's a buyer for each point. One per buyer, yep. Yep. You get um, a half a point for meeting potential clients looking to do business within 90 days. Somebody said, hey, we're not ready yet, but we're thinking about it, you know, two or three months from now. That's a half a point. I put them in my phone. I put them on my follow-up system. Whereas, like I said, on Thursdays and Tuesdays of my schedule, it says follow-up, and I just shoot them a text. I do half one day, the next half Thursday, then I flip it the week after. I get to the folks I have who I haven't gotten to for the month. So it's simple, but um, that's the point system. No, no points on calls. No. <laughs> well, that, that's okay. So now, when you're going to be gone for a week, do you have to make up 28 points? Like. So, Basically, I make up for it. Well, I won't be gone for a week. I'll be gone for four days. Well, I'm just, I'm just giving an example. If you're gone for four days, you got to make up 16 points. My days start over. So, like, tip is today, I have four points. It's now I'm in brand new day mode. Gotcha. I have to go out and get four more points for the days I normally go. That's why you, I know it's So, you five. do make it up. Yes. Oh, yeah. But, but it's not like, oh, I got eight points naturally. I'm just going to roll for it. No, it's I got four points. I'm starting over. My day, mentally in my mind, my day just started over because I know I have to get something for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So. What What are the conversations? Now you you've got a fiance. Yep. What are the What are the conversations with your fiance when she sees you hustling or whatever? Are you Are you saying, Hey, this is going to pay off. One day we're going to have kids and we're going to be able to do whatever we want. Or are you doing, you know, uh, hey, you know, you nag me too much. This is how I can get away from you. Like, what is your message to, to your uh, very, to fiance? For us, it, it, it's, it's very simple. Either you want to have the ability to retire when you're 32 or you don't. You let me know. At any point where you say, you know what, I don't want to have that option, I'll slow it down. But so you're like, I'm going to do whatever it takes for the next five to seven years to make sure that I can do whatever I want for the next 40. For, for the rest of my life. And okay. she, here's the thing. She's on board with it simply because she understands what we want. I want 30 houses by the time I'm 30, residual income. We bought six houses. You want to buy 30 houses. You want to buy multifamilies. And, and yes, that's right. So, you know, we bought six houses so far this year. Uh, and it's just going to continue to go and go and go and go and go. But the thing is, like, it's goals. And, and you have to align yourself with people in your life that want the same thing you want. If she didn't want everything that I wanted, I would have never asked her to marry me. See what I'm saying? Like, it's one of those things. So you, you had to make sure that we're on the same page. This is who I am. You know this is who I am. We're on the same page. This is what it takes. I'm not a nine to five, you know, whatever. This is who I am. Correct. This is, this is, this is my plan for us. Do you like the plan or not? 
And if you don't like it, let's adjust it to where it fits your schedule. But it was, it was, she liked it. Or, or we're not made for each other if that's the case, because this is kind of who I am, right? That's part of, right. that's part of connecting is making sure I that you've got the right person. Right. I want to plan things. I, I want to go after while I'm young. I don't want to work and tell hows and all this different stuff to them 50, 60, 70 years of age. I want to at some point get back to the game of football. I want to go back and if I want to coach high school football, I want to be able to coach high school football without worrying, oh, do I have enough saved up to pay the bills? I want to be able to fully give my all to those kids or if I want to coach college football. I want to be able to get fired from jobs because the head coach or maybe if I'm a head coach, we have a down season, they fire me and I don't have to worry about, well, dang, they just fired me. I just put my family in a bind. No. You want to make decisions based on what you want to do, not based on what you have to do. Correct. And because and, and, and the people are asking the questions right now. And so it means that right now you're willing to make 150, 200 calls a day, whatever it is, but you are getting, you're calling uh, uh, FISBOs, FSBOs, fastest and shortest business opportunities. You're, you're calling expireds. You're calling uh, uh, like circle prospecting, not expireds. Okay, so FISBOs, circle prospecting. So when a listing comes up in an area, you're hitting that neighborhood. There, is there anyone else you're calling? Um, past clients, that's it. Past clients, and so, and you're getting the, the information though for uh, FISBOs, uh, uh, for sale by owners, and for circle prospecting through the Red X. Well, for, for sale by owners, you get it from Zillow. Cool. Their numbers rank their own Zillow. I am just going to Zillow, type in a, you know, a, a city, and click the top of the thing where it only shows you for sale by owners. The number's at the bottom of the page. The last number you see because is- Because the owner's page. info is there. Correct. So, you know, that information is public. Everybody can start calling for by owners. That's why so many agents do it, because that's easy. Just type it in. Red X, you have to look at an address. You have to find it. You have to key it in. You have to do it's more, more to it. Or to go out and do it now, you have to go. You have to pay. So um, that's why so many agents call for by owners. But here's the thing. Everybody calls them. So what makes you different? What makes me I'm different? I was going to say, what are you saying to them to separate yourself? Right. Uh, it's simple. And hopefully no one's my market is listening to this podcast, but if you are perfect, because that'll just make me double up on my calls. But simply, uh, it goes ring, ring, ring. Hey, this is such and such. Basically, I never ask them about um, listing their house. What I call them and do, I try to lock them down on the buy side. Simply yeah. say, hey, I understand you have a house that you're selling, which is great. And I kind of nut out all the other agents by saying, you know, I see you listed your house for Sarah Bona, which is great. I will say, if you're going to take this route, you should try for at least 30 days. And they're like, well, wow. Everybody else that have called me would have said, I need to list it with them now. So I tell them, hey, if you're going to try this route, you need to try for at least 30 days. Uh, my concern for you is, because I think your house might sell fast, uh, what are you going to do when this house sells? Do you have somebody helping you on the buy side? I don't know. Oh, so you, you call from the perspective of you're not looking for the listing from no. them. Although, although in the end, if you get to buy, I mean, like almost 83% right. would end up selling through an agent anyway. Here's You're trying to get the relationship by saying, hey, what are you going to do on the buy side? I really, I wish you the best and I'll help you as much as I can on this. But where are you going to go? I've got access to the properties. I've got the relationships. I've got right. the... And I let them know, hey, did you know it costs you zero dollars to have an agent help you find a property? And they say, okay, yeah, I didn't know that. But my thinking is this. If their house don't sell and they're working with me on the buy side, who do you think? That's my point, man. 83% of them sell through an agent. So that's brilliant, man. I love that. So you're going in like completely again, uh, 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 you know, a pattern disruption, which is what that is, <laughs> pattern disruption. They're used to want to list your property, want to list your property, want to uh, whatever. And you're going, whoa, whoa, whoa. You should probably keep it listed for at least 30 days. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll help you however I can. But hey, what do you plan to do on the buy side? Are you aware that you're not even going to, uh, you don't even have to pay to have representation on the buy side? I'd love to help you out on that angle. And now, although there's many different people calling, you're the only one going in going, hey, hope that works out. I'll help you. What are you doing over here? Correct. I'm building that relationship. I'm getting to talk to them, getting to say, hey, you, okay, you're building. Do you have a building? Do you understand what goes into building? Let's sit down. Um, let's go through the process. And, you know, you can take this information, do what you want to do with it. I'm just here to help you. If there's anything in the world I can do to help, I'm here to do it. But More importantly, it costs you nothing. It costs me nothing. Cost them nothing. I'm saying cost them nothing. Like, hey, I'm, I'm here to help. It cost them nothing to, them nothing to listen and say, okay, yes, I want to work with you. And I let them know, in the event that you get a contract on your house, 
if you need a second eye, so take take a look at it, give you some advice since we're working on the buy side. And I throw that in there. I said, hey, since we're working on the buy side, I will look over your contract and help you if something comes before the time. You know, so I'm love here to help that. and they love it. Love that because when it doesn't end up selling, or even if it does, <clears throat> but if it doesn't, sure. I'm here for you. I guarantee myself at least three percent. All right, so I'm gonna ask and you don't have to answer this, you don't want to. Yep. You're doing all these properties. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're not spending a ton on marketing or anything, you know, down the road that may change softwares, infrastructure, all that stuff may change. You may develop some overhead over time to build what you want to build. But for right now, uh, are you saving money? Like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing with your money, man? Like, are you, are you, uh, are you being foolish or are you, uh, what are you doing? I heard you say you bought like six properties. That's awesome. Every, every, everyone I know calls me cheap. They call me cheap simply because I ain't got it. That's my response, man. That's right, man. I don't have it. You know, I, man, I can't, I can't, I can't afford that. I can't buy that. But I can, but I'm training my mind to not want those items. You're so truly working like you're broke. Like not just the yeah. Instagram hashtag. Like you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue. Man, here, here's why. Because as commissions come in, I'm trying to spend every dime I have as quick as I can. But I'm not spending it on BS. I'm buying stock. I'm buying houses. I'm putting it, you know, and uh, bonds, stuff like that. There's I a difference it. between spending and investing. They're two different things. Uh, Both of them make the money disappear out of your, but one of them yeah. is gone, never to be returned. Yeah, the other one comes back, right? Yep. Yeah. So that's my thing. Uh, my, my motto is every month go broke. And if you're spending on the right things, you'll look up in time when it's time to look up and say, well, why? I'm, I'm no longer broke anymore, you know? But that's, right. that's just my thinking. So I have to go to work every, every single day, every single week, every single month, simply because the money I've made is put somewhere that I can't physically access. You're, 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 you're purposefully creating a situation where you don't technically have, you know, something to fall into. I mean, if you, tech, if you had to, had to, you could go and like sell something or refinance, or you could do something like that, which would be annoying. And it, it, it's not quick, it's not easy. So you're putting yourself in a position where you almost can't make bad decisions. Like you can't, you can't do, you can't, you know, just do something on the spot that was, you know, spur of the moment or something that's a bad financial decision because you're putting yourself in a position where it's not there for you. You know, it's almost like if you know that you're struggling with weight, then you probably shouldn't have cookies and donuts sitting around your house. Correct. If you're real strong when you're, you're, you know, you're at work and you just finished your salad and you're full, but at nine o'clock tonight, when you're just sitting up and now those donuts are there and you've had a couple of drinks and it's like, whatever, don't even put it there. It's the same kind of a thing where you don't even want to put the temptations there. So you take the money and you go, Hey, rather than do something stupid with this, I'm going to spend it either way. So I might as well invest it. I'll spend it that way. You're putting it into things that make it illiquid. Let me give you an example of how this has helped me. Just maybe, Three weeks ago, we stopped by Tesla uh, and we test drove one of those Tesla trucks. You know, that thing's a one of those space trucks. Yeah, we, right. The, 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 the hundred grand one. But, you know, a butterfly doors. We I'm talking about we loved it. What kept me from buying that truck is, hey, I don't have any liquid money. So I had to go home, had to call my CPA. And I said, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about buying a Tesla truck. I'm going to sell one of my houses. Tell me the uh, tax uh, consequence behind doing that. She told me. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I don't need the truck that bad. Yeah, if I would have had that money just sitting, oh, 100%, I would have scoped a check. Like, I would have scoped. I, I literally looked at my account to see how much money I had in there. I looked in my account like this poor money pharmacy. But it was going to take th three days. And, you know, I, that's all I need is three days to, to think about it and say, oh, it's a dumb move. You were like, all right, it doesn't make but sense anymore. I would have just had that money sit. I would have scoped a check for the truck, and it would have been a terrible investment. How, how are you doing that now? You said you called your CPA. Are you using anything to keep track of money? Are you using QuickBooks? Are you using, like, uh, See, I'm an accountant. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, that's exactly hired, what I'm asking. I hired, I hired a CPA simply because I don't want to have the trouble of going through all my stuff and you know, January, February, and I don't want to, I don't want to keep up with all that. 
So I pay a fee, which is deductible, uh, for them to do it. And I, I'm just working free. But I don't but know. are you connecting like a, a QuickBooks or something to like keep everything in order? Or, or what do you just, you just have them handle everything? I have them handle everything. But here's the thing. I check my accounts every single morning yeah. and every single night. I know exactly what was in there because, and I have to do that simply because it got to a point where like, as long as that front number don't change, I don't have a clue. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, but now it's like, I look at it every day. I know where it is. Uh, it needs to be there when I check it at night, if, unless I spent something, but it's every day and I keep up with it. Like I have my, I have two separate cards where I have my business card and I have my personal. I check my business card. And I know how much I spent on it. I take my personal card. I know how much I spent on it. But it all comes out the same account at the end of the day. So it, I can easily track it. I don't spend any money daily, like on business and stuff. So like QuickBooks and all that stuff, trying to keep up with it. Like everything that I spend, it's going to be a swipe of my business credit card of this business or a uh, swipe of my personal card where I can just look at my statement and say, okay, yeah, I, I remember doing this. I remember doing that. So I just keep it simple, man. I don't try to. Keep up with it. Like what do you what do you what do you do to relax? Me, man, I'm big into like I said, Fortnite, uh, football, pickup, basketball. Uh, I just yeah, go Fortnite has taken over the world, man. Man, it's it's awesome. Like, I don't my brothers they they're, they're so terrible because they know I go to bed at 9 30. Like my alarm goes off to go to bed. They personally get on wait, the wait, bed. your alarm goes off to go to bed. Yeah, at 9 30. I'm learning we go alarm to go to bed. To go to bed every single day. So um, they get on the game around 11 o'clock p.m. I'm like, dude, I never play with y'all because y'all play so late. I said, let's start playing around six or seven and I can play for four or five hours and be done. But on weekends, uh, they play around like 12. So I play majority of the weekends. But I do that. I go to the park. Me and my fiance, we got bikes. You know, we're getting bikes now. But man, I look at some bikes. Bikes are expensive. Oh, bikes, can, bikes can get, yeah, bikes can get nice, man. Are you now, I used to buy in Walmart, you know, $79, $89. Man, I went to that bike shop, $750. I said, what is this? I, you know what? If a bike's going to cost me $750, bucks, it better come with $700 bucks tucked, tucked in somewhere. Because that's, oh, that's insane. That's insane. Yeah, those bikes were expensive. Uh, so I ended up did not buy a bike. Are you, are you a good, good b-ball player? Basketball? Oh man, I put it on you. Because football, football doesn't always translate. You're a good basketball player yeah, too. I can shoot. I can shoot. I'm, I'm lights out shoot. How are you? How are your ups? How are your ups? You were cornerback, wide receiver. Yeah, my, my vertical was 41. Hello. You have a 41 inch vertical. Yeah, 41 inch. Oh my god. Do you know what I would do to have a 41 inch vertical? Yeah. Oh my god. I can jump. I can run, man. That's that's. that's that's freakish. 41 inch vertical. You're like the real life dunk contest, like just. But here's the thing. I can't dunk. I'm sorry, what? I'm not coordinated cool enough to dunk. Like I can dunk, like somebody told me an alley hoop, I can dunk. But if I'm having a dribble and I'm having to go dunk, I can't dunk. But that, that's a travesty. That's, that's a travesty, okay? If I had a 41 inch vertical, I feel like we're doing it every day, it's making sure I can dunk like that. I can free run if you throw alley, I can go get in the dunk. But if I'm just fast break, I cannot dunk. Oh my God. That is I, I'm just weird, bro, but I can shoot all day. I can stand, we can shoot, we can shoot. I won't miss. That's all what, that's that was what, my thing in basketball. I was a shooter and I used to crash the ball, get rebounds, uh, stuff like that. Other than that, nah, man. Basketball, but, you know, I can, I can protect myself dribbling. I can get to the basket and all that, but I just rather just spot up, shoot. Uh, any room whatsoever. Me, me too, man. I, I, uh, you know, I used to just go and dunk all over everybody, but I prefer to stay in the back. Yeah, and shoot, you know, just, just, you know, I don't, I don't need to show off. I just put up a couple shots. I don't need to be dunking all over everybody. Hey, what, what is, uh, what's your advice to everybody? We got to bring this into a close here. What, what, what would your, what would your advice be to everybody listening right now? Like for real, you know, when you, when you look at what you've done is impressive, and honestly, what I think is going to happen moving forward, uh, and I'm going to try to help you some too, is going to be very impressive as well. Um, what would be your advice to people who are stuck at, you know, 15 transactions, 30 transactions, 40 transactions, 50 transactions, five transactions, um, you know, whatever it is, those people that are, you know, stuck in just doing nothing but getting referrals. And that's, that's why their business never grows is it's just, it's unreliable. What is your advice to, to people that are watching? 
Uh, my advice is simple, man. Implement the four-point system. Try to get four points every single day. Uh, what that would allow you to do is not only work more, but also be more productive. Uh, a lot of folks, they want the success, but they don't want to work for it. If, and I tell people, if you think that if someone hands you 100 deals that you could just manage it, you're wrong. You have to mentally prepare yourself for it. So you have to overwork your brain to say, okay, now when I'm in this crazy time of feeling burned out, I know how to come out of it. So it's simple. Like implement the four-point system. Get four points every day. Get to a point to where you're getting four points every single day. And then look at, okay, now what can I do different? Things that you can do every single day that don't cost you one penny, door knocking, cold calling, going to grocery stores, meet people. You can do that all day long. You can go to the movie theater and meet people. It's it costs a dime. Easy. Just get out there. And, and, and it's easy. Put yourself out there. Uh, I challenge you guys to make a social media post, you know, twice a day for seven days straight over the next 30 days. Put something on your social media twice a day. If it's a video of you, hey, I'm out door knocking right now in the neighborhood, or if it's Hey, I'm in the office making phone calls. Um, let me know if I can give you a call. You know, simple stuff like that. And disconnect uh, yourself from the results, meaning like correct. sometimes people won't post on Instagram because I'm not going to get 300 likes or I don't want to post a video on Facebook because it's not going to get 4,000 views. Disconnect yourself from the results. Just start getting used to process. That's it. That's it. How can people connect with you? Man, you can follow me on Instagram at Quintavious Burdett. Uh, Facebook, Quintavious Burdett, everything I have is pretty much Quintavious Burdett, but uh, you can reach out. My number is on all my sites. Uh, what I do ask of you guys, if you want to reach out, please send me a text message first, or if you're going to call me, let me tell you how I set my calls up, and you can also use it. It's, it's five key things that's very important on every single call. You ask for the person, you introduce yourself, you give back to their time. All right, you neutralize the conversation and you get to the point. So if I was calling, I would say, hey, my sweet Mr. James. Mr. James, Quintavious over at Remax. Did I catch you at a bad time? That's me giving back to your time. Did I catch you at a bad time? You say no, I'll say perfect. You know, I'm uh, sitting in the office today. Um, it's raining outside. So I, of course I can't door knock. I'm usually door knock around this time. Um, he'll laugh and I'm like, okay, blah, 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 whatever. Or, hey, it's football season coming up. Who are you cheering for? I neutralize the conversation. Yep. When he tells me, I get to the point. Um, I, hey, look here, I got you, got you. I'm going to take up too much of your time. I see you got a property located at 123 Main Street. Have you guys potentially thought about the side of the town? So if you call me, please ask for me. Tell me who you are. Give back to my time. You don't have to neutralize the conversation with me. Just go ahead and get to the point. Uh, but at least give back to my time and ask me if, if it's a good time, if you choose to call. But a text message will be perfect. You might be getting, man, a lot of people are going to see this. I don't know if I'd be saying call or text me. <laughs> man, hey, look, it, it, it only helps, you know. It only helps. I'll tell you right now, man, close friends, close friends in my family are pretty much the only people that have my number. Like, it's just. Uh, yeah, well, I, can, see, I have two see. phones, though. So I can shut one of them off, and I have a personal phone. They'll never call. So I'm fine. Nice. Nice. Well, guys, a couple things for everybody who's watching right now. Hang on here a second, Q. Uh, number one, uh, again, if you want to win that ticket uh, to the advance, uh, take a picture of you watching this or just share it right here on Facebook and tag me uh, or take a picture of it and uh, tag me on Instagram at Jared James today. Uh, that would be awesome. We're going we're gonna to pick a, a winner in the next 24 hours. Do me a favor, though, if you're watching this for real. Uh, I want you guys to kind of like say thank you to Q for being, coming on here and being willing to share so much with you guys. So hit that like, leave a comment, say thank you. Uh, and the greatest way we can say thank you is just hit that share button, get it out to other people so that they can kind of hear his message too. Um, you know, we live in a world right now where, you know, I know a lot of successful people. I know people coming up. I know people that have done it already. And not everybody's willing to share, you know, everyone's afraid that uh, someone's going to hear something, they're going to be from their market or, you know, whatever it is. So, uh, you know, find a way to kind of say thank you to him for doing that. Uh, we appreciate everybody for being on here. Q, hold on one second, but we love you all. Thanks so much for watching or listening if you're listening to this on the podcast and uh, make sure you say hello to him and say thanks. Okay, guys, have a great one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.